Now I'm going to open this up in Adobe Camera Raw and we're going to fool with the post processing a little more. So right click, open with Camera Raw. And remember, you have to have saved it as a TIFF or a JPEG in order for Camera Raw to open it. So if you're having trouble opening it, you may have saved your original HDR image as a Photoshop image. So most of the time, a good place to start with Camera Raw is to just hit this auto and see what happens. I think it definitely exposed the shot a little bit too much and probably brought the whites up a little bit too much. If I want to, I always like to adjust my whites and blacks myself. So if I want to set that back to zero, I can just double click on the triangle. All right, the exposure, I'm going to bring it back a little bit. I think it does need more contrast, but I'm going to mess with my shadows first. I'm going to bring them up a bit. I like to bring shadows up a lot sometimes in HDR work. It just brings the detail out a little bit more. Highlights. Don't, if anything, I think I'd bring them down a little bit because I've got a, they're a touch high up in the sky area, but not too much with the highlights. Then I'm going to check my whites and my blacks to see that they're at the proper level. And these are the ones that there is this actually a science to. It tells you when you start to get clipping on your whites and blacks. So I'll hold down the Alt key, left click with the mouse, and I want to just bring it up to the point where I start to see a little bit of color in the screen. And then maybe with the whites just back up. I, I don't want to see much. Okay, and now I'm going to work with my blacks the same way and bring it up until I start to see color in the screen. The blacks can take a little bit more than the whites can. So if I see not pure black in the screen, but a little bit of yellow like we're seeing here, that's fine. Okay, so that seems like a good starting point. I almost always want to bring up my clarity. And if we want to just kind of look and see, I'm, I'm kind of worried about this region in here because it's a little, it's got some issues. And if we want to just zoom in, we can hit our plus key over here. Use our hand to bring it into the center of our view. I really don't like my sky, but I've got another way to fix that. And... Let's fool with our clarity a bit and see what happens as we bring it up and down. I think it can use a good bit of clarity in here. I'm going to bring it up to about 45. And you can actually type your number in here too if you want. Okay, that looks good. I can hit the minus key here. Or I can just go down on this drop menu and do fit and view. Now let's look at what my lens correction does. I always like to check that out. Click on that, put in enable lens correction. I use the Tamron lens on this. Do I like it better with or without? Well, I think I like it better with. It took care of some distortions. So let's go back to my basic menu again. And I'm going to show you another really cool feature that Adobe Camera Raw has, or for all you Lightroom users, Adobe Camera Raw and Adobe Lightroom aren't all that different. The interface on Adobe Lightroom is a little bit easier to use, and I, I prefer Lightroom, but they've got very similar tools. So th this is a graduated filter, and what this is really great for is bringing out the blue in your sky. And you can see my sky, you know, is kind of washed out and not so great looking. And it would look nice if it were a bit bluer and popped a bit. So you click on this graduated filter and you'll get a little crosshair thing here. And what you want to do is start near the top of the photo and bring it down. Now see how it kind of twists. If you hold the shift key, you can bring it straight down. Now, on this photo, I don't know that I want to bring it straight down, although it doesn't seem to be giving me any problems in here. But I actually might want to tilt it a little bit and keep it just in that sky area. 
You want to bring it down just a little bit below your sky. Now, oops, 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 uh, uh-oh, now I've really messed it up. Well, this is a real problem with Adobe Camera Raw. There's no undo button. And if any of you have looked for an undo button, mostly when you were using the sliders, which we did before, it didn't really matter because you could just adjust the sliders back. But now you start using some more complex tools, you can mess things up and it can really be a problem. <laughs> Well, Adobe Camera Raw does not have an undo button. However, it does work with some of Adobe's keyboard shortcuts. So here are a couple of keyboard shortcuts that you really do need to learn now. And as you work with Adobe more, you'll learn more and more keyboard shortcuts. Now I want to get this back to the starting point and start all over with this graduated filter. Well, to just go one step back, so in other words, an undo key, you hit Control Z on the PC or Command Z on the Mac. And that's basically an undo button. Now if I hit Control or Command Z again, it actually redoes what it just undid. Now that can be nice when you're trying to figure out whether or not you like a treatment. You can undo, redo, undo, redo. But I need to get back a little bit farther with this because I tried to fix it and mess it up a couple of steps. If you want to continuously go back one step, you hit Control Alt Z on the PC or Command Alt Z on the Mac, and that'll take you back a step. And I usually keep my fingers on the Control or Command in the Alt key and just keep tapping the Z. Back one more step, back one more step, and now we're back to where we started with the graduated filter. So let's start this again. So I actually don't want to put this in a straight line. And if you hold the shift key down, you can go just right across your sky, which works for a lot of pictures. I want to do a little bit of a tilt. And I think right about there looks nice. Okay, so that's good. Now what our graduated filter did was it reduces the exposure on the sky a bit, but it does it gradually. So you notice your sky is a little darker up in the corner here and gradually becomes lighter, which makes it blend in a little bit better with the tree line. You can change these settings. The other thing it do did was it increased the, increased the saturation. It increased the saturation in the blues automatically. We could change that color, but we're not going to mess with that. And it did it on a graduated basis. So we can mess with these settings a bit if we want. And we're just changing that area that's marked by the graduated filter. So if I wanted to make the exposure darker, see what happens. I can almost turn this into night. And I maybe want to make it not quite as dark as what it gave me. That looks nice to me. And then here's the saturation. You can see what happens if we mess with that. Less saturated, more saturated. Again, just look to where it looks kind of nice to you without being too garish. And I'm just going to put it right in there. So now I've got a much nicer bluer sky. Now I use Lightroom, and there may be a trick to this, but I haven't figured it out yet. So to get back to my other sliders from Adobe Camera Raw, the only way I've figured it out so far is to click Done and then open my image up again. So now I'm going to just right click and open it up because I'm not quite done with my raw stuff yet. And open it in Adobe Camera Raw. And now you can see all the settings are still there, but I got my regular sliders back. So now that we've messed with the sky, we might want to tweak these a little bit, although I don't necessarily think so. Here's another thing you can do. Now, I've got a lot of color over in here, but I think my greens are a little bit washed out. Now, you can selectively bump up your colors in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. So you want to hit this HSL and grayscale, and you'll see that color slides come up. You can work either with hue, saturation, Saturation would be something you'd want to work with 
hue you would work with if there were a particular color that you wanted to correct. Like if your reds were looking too purpley or something, you might want to dye your magenta or your reds over to the right. But in most pictures, I work with the saturation and sometimes the luminance. So the luminance will make a particular color brighter or darker. So the saturation, we can look, we have a lot of oranges and yellows in here. And let's just look at what happens if we move our saturation slider over. And, you know, the thing is, our oranges, if we move it over to the left, we dial back the saturation. And you can see if we move it over to the right, it gets a lot more saturated. Now, I'm actually pretty happy with the way our oranges look. I don't want to get them over done in this picture because nature made them look pretty nice as it is. There may be some areas that I'd like to correct, but I, I have to do that in Photoshop. But you know, my greens look a little bit washed out. Now sometimes when I bump up saturation, the greens will get a little garish looking and I'll dial back the greens. But in this particular picture, the sunlight was hitting the orange trees and brought out a bit more saturation and the greens are a little bit washed out. So watch what happens when I slide my greens over. And you see that these trees really start kind of popping a little bit more. And how much do I want to do it? Well, not all the way up, I don't think, but I think those greens could use quite a bit of saturation. Again, we can move the slider one way, move it the other, and you can see what happens. I'm going to put this around 70%. I think they popped out a little bit. Now I'm just going to fool with my reds. Maybe these leaves I'd like to see a little more color pop out in it. I don't know whether it'll do it or not. No, it's not really changing them too much. I don't have much red in it. If, if it doesn't change anything, it's because you really don't have that color in your scene. Well, it can't hurt to leave my reds up a little bit. It's not making anything look too garish. And Perhaps, although I also notice it's not changing the histogram up here, it'll give my leaf, my fallen leaves a little bit more color. If you want to mess with your, if you want to bring out your sky without messing with that graduated filter, sometimes popping these blues up will work. And again, this went way too far, and you see how the road gets a bluish tinge to it. We take it out, we lose the color from the sky quite a bit. So I think I'm going to leave my blue slider where it is. I don't want our road to turn blue. And again, remember if you have any spots in your picture, you can use your spot removal tool up here. There's a straightening tool up here, which you used in your last assignment. And there's also a red eye removal tool up here. All right, so I'm liking the way this looks at this point. Now, one thing I haven't done is sharpen my picture. Uh, if, if I see that there's much noise in the picture, I definitely want to take that out in Adobe Camera Raw because Adobe Camera Raw's noise removal tool is much better than the Photoshop noise removal tool. And if I wanted to do that, I'd just move my luminance button over here. Now, they'll make your picture probably a little, little bit softer, and I don't really have much noise in this picture. So I'm, I'm not going to mess with noise reduction. This was taken during the day, but if I were taking an evening picture, it might have some noise in it that I wanted to deal with. Now my sharpening, I'm going to save for Photoshop because I kind of like the way the high-pass filter works for a picture like this. But a lot of people do sharpen in Adobe Camera Raw, and it's very easy. You just move the sharpening slider over. Now I think whenever you're sharpening, it's a good idea to zoom in on your picture a little bit and see what's happening. And we can show you if we move all the way over, things get a little too crunchy. But you could probably move over to 90 or 100 even, and it'd look fine. Let's see what happens if we fool with this detail slide. Usually you don't want to fool with your radius slide, and I'll show you why. See how that gets like kind of crunchy looking? So you almost always want to leave your radius around one, unless you will have a picture that really can use detail and, and is very sharp and sharpness is what you want to stand out in the picture and then maybe you want to put it up to 1.2 or something. All right and the detail again can just kind of bring things out a little bit more. 
I'm going to leave all my sliders where they were because I'm going to use the, and again, if I want to go back to the default, all I do is double click on them because th these were ones that the default wasn't zero. So watch when I double click on this. It goes back to the default, which was 25. Okay, so I'll bring my image back to fit to view. And if you want to do your sharpening using Adobe Camera Raw, that's fine. In fact, you could pretty much do all your post-processing on this. You can see just what I've done now, messing with the sky, especially if we sharpen it a little bit. Probably around the 100 or in the 90s on this. Let me bring up the detail as touch. You can see that right there is a pretty nice finished picture. Okay, but I'm going to finish it up. I want to bring out a little bit more of the color in the hidden areas. And there's a really cool tool in Photoshop that does that. And then I'm going to use the high pass filter for sharpening. So what I want to do is open the image. And it'll open right in Photoshop. 